Dr. Hoyer, nuclear power, a very um, hot political, well, a political hot potato in Malaysia as well, since we too seek uh, some kind of energy solution. The thing is, in Germany, in May, your coalition government uh, announced a reversal of policy that will see all Germany's nuclear power phased out in about 12 years' time, 11 years' time, actually. But back home, it was not a policy that was acceptable uh, to, by everyone. Uh, what happened there? Well, what are the details? It is a highly disputed issue in my country. We have never relied as heavily upon nuclear energy as some of our partners, immediate partners like France have. On the other hand, we have had a strategy that is based on a mixed uh, energy um, uh, production. And after Fukushima, we did lose ground with our public opinion on this. It was, it was not tolerated anymore because we had such a very, very great confidence in Japanese technology and the ability to, to deal with a complicated issue like nuclear energy that uh, we were completely beaten off track by the developments in Japan and, and there was a rather rather broad consensus that we have to reshape our decisions on nuclear energy. At the end of the day we took a very courageous decision because I believe indeed that it is extremely ambitious to say that within 11 years we would be able to move out of nuclear energy without resorting to energy supplies from neighboring countries which again rely upon nuclear energy. So we have to be uh, on a clear line here and say we are not only going to, to, to leave the nuclear track for our own energy production but that we are going to be able to come up with, a, with technological progress which will enable us to, to rely much more on uh, new energies, renewables in particular, than we had expected ourselves. So we can afford to make this courageous step only, if and only, only if we can really bring about this technological revolution that will enable us to, uh, to make a quantum leap in renewable energies, and we have the ambition to be the, the world leader on this. One of the reasons why this debate is taking place uh, is we read that back in Germany, um, well, there are five political parties that are all uh, uh, getting some kind of base level support, and one of them is the environmental, the, the Green Party, the Greens. Yeah. Now, uh, the thing is, the flip, that's the I guess that's the flip side of democracy, Dr. Hoyer, where uh, the voice of the people is making themselves being heard, but it is dividing the country as a whole. Uh, is this the uh, evil side of democracy, Dr. Hoyer? Do you feel that this, uh, this is hurting Germany, no, I, dividing I do, the nation? I do not think so, because when I grew up, we had a political situation in a free democratic society where before elections already 85% of the voters knew whom they would vote for the next time. So the party loyalty was the name of the game at that time. Nowadays, People are much more critical, they have a much closer look to what the parties have to offer, and the mobility between the parties is tremendous. And I think this is a, an expression of democratic maturity, as long as we do not go to the extremes. And in Germany, you don't have very many indications that, uh, that the political culture or the attitude of the people might turn to the extreme sides. The country is run out of the center, and I believe it's going to be run out of the center too. So our dem democ democratic system is vibrant. Uh, it is uh, very powerful. It uh, accepts differences of opinion and uh, thinks this is a basic part of our political culture. Last question. In terms of, uh, I guess, one of the other challenges facing Germany, uh, and as a victim of your success as well, um, skilled labor shortages is uh, one of the issues facing Germany as well as perhaps net emigration to countries like Turkey. Uh, how is the German government dealing with these challenges? I think we are only just beginning to realize how big the problem is. Uh, shortage of skilled labor is the number one issue when you go to, to a business convention nowadays. And uh, I think we, we need to develop a completely different attitude vis-a-vis -vis immigration. Uh, some of our colleagues in the political class have the, pe the impression that when we when we talk about immigration, this is an attack on our social security systems or whatever. No, it is a pure necessity to, to welcome others to our country and to integrate them into our societies and, and be very open-minded on this. So we, we in Germany, we must develop a 
a welcome culture, uh, not only for economic reasons, but also for reasons of internal cohesion of a society and a society which does not produce uh, subdivisions uh, of society. And uh, I believe that uh, this turnaround is still ahead and we are trying, we are doing everything we can in order to, to develop this welcome culture. People are leaving though. Uh, people are leaving Germany, perhaps more leaving than they are coming. Why, why is that the case? This is the, uh, the fact that, uh, at least for the last couple of years, that in particular for very high-skilled workers or high-skilled professionals, uh, the labor markets in other countries of the world, like in Asia, like in North America, have been more attractive. Uh, there is a certain return now taking place, so it's going back and forth. But if you want to be an open society, if you want to be an open market, also an open labor market, then you must accept the fact that uh, you, you need more people from outside and you need to welcome them. At the same time, if you're not attractive enough for your own people to stay, then you have to accept the fact that they leave. So this is part of the deal and we should have, have self-esteem enough to, to live up to that uh, challenge. Thank you.